Hello, I'm Sandra, and I'm going to introduce the concepts of having and using a data catalogue in a research lab situation. By the end of this video, you'll be able to describe the concepts of a data catalogue, its benefits, and how to create one for your lab. I like the idea of the analogy to a library to describe a data catalogue. If you're looking for a book in a library or online repository, you will use the library catalog. The catalog will tell you the book's author, edition, location and availability. The library catalog may be expanded to include all the library catalogs in a country or the world if the user interface is the same countrywide or worldwide. A data catalog is exactly this, but for your organization's data. It provides context and provenance for each data asset through metadata. It could be for a team, department, or for the whole organization. For this RDM bite, we are focusing on data catalogs used within a team or department and are relatively straightforward and simple. Large organizations may use databases or packages to manage their data assets. What are data assets? Some examples of data assets, but not limited to, are structured data, such as spreadsheets, unstructured data, which includes a wide range of things from documents, images, audio and video, and notebooks and markdowns that might include reports, visualizations or models. At its simplest, a data catalog could be a spreadsheet with a few column headings. The column headings are the metadata of the data catalog, and these provide a short description of the data in a particular column. Key things to consider when building a data catalog. It should be searchable, so a paper record is not ideal. Consider using a spreadsheet, and this would facilitate searching. Ideally have the data catalog accessible to the people who are creating, managing, and using the data assets. This probably means the data catalog should be online somewhere, like a Google Doc or shared drive. Ensure the data catalog has version control facilities. This can mean having the data catalog in something like SharePoint. Having version control allows the data catalog to be rolled back to an earlier version if any mistakes were made when updating the data catalog. Think of the data catalog as a living document. Add new data assets when applicable and try to keep the catalog up to date. As mentioned previously, the columns of the data catalog are its metadata, that is, the data that describes the data. There are different types of metadata that can be associated with each data asset. The dataset metadata, which includes the name and location of the dataset. It might also include links to the dataset and relevant publications. People metadata relates to who is working with the data including analysts, data stewards, experts, etc. Processing metadata describes any transformation and or curation made to the data. Search metadata are the keywords and tagging used to facilitate finding data. Source metadata provides details about where the data comes from and if there are any limitations and restrictions when using the data. You may not need all of these metadata in your data catalogue, but it's helpful to bear these things in mind when you start building your research lab's data catalogue. You may be thinking, why do I need to have a data catalogue? And isn't it a lot of work to keep it up to date? For me, the biggest benefit of having a data catalogue is having information about all the data sets I manage for a project readily to hand and in one place. This saves me the time and effort of searching through endless emails to find the information I want to find about a data set. Have you ever had the situation where you've been asked about a data set, but the researcher has left your team and you are hunting around for details about the data set? A data catalogue could help to answer maybe not all the questions asked, but probably quite a lot of them. A data catalogue provides context of the group's data. You can easily see what data sets are being used, commonalities across the data sets, and potential omissions. There is flexibility to add more metadata to describe complexities or subsets within the data sets. 
and to remove columns if they are deemed unnecessary. It is a tool to reduce risk as data governance, management and access are more transparent and can be used by data management committees to grant access to data. Generally, most of the information in the catalogue is not confidential, so data catalogues can be shared with few restrictions. Here's an example of a team's data catalogue. This example is metadata for the data set, people and source. For data set metadata, there is primary ID, supplied ID, working name and location. For people metadata, there is owner. Here we have included a person's initials, but you could expand this to include their ORCID, for example. It's important to use a method where you can identify the person being referenced. The column origin is the source metadata. Description could fall into dataset metadata, but also be part of the search metadata with keywords such as mouse, RNA-seq, human, etc. An important thing to note when creating and updating data catalogues, avoid having blank or null values. This avoids any confusion. For example, a zero is different from a blank cell. Zero is considered actual data. A blank cell can be interpreted as missing, wasn't collected, unknown, etc. In the data catalogue example, the last row of supplied ID, we have a not available and the third row of location, the content is not archived to avoid leaving blank cells. Thanks for watching. Please see the links used as well as links to additional resources alongside this video.